so good morning everyone good morning to see you all here on this saturday morning for this particular first session for the day i professor bhagyashri pandey thoroughly pleased to witness you all here uh, at this spectrum 2023 it's my immense privilege to welcome you all on behalf of mit school of distance education so uh, our today's first session is on industry scenario and use cases pertaining to data science and analytics and for the same we are having very experienced industry experts uh, here mrs sonali kulkarni who is currently working as director pmo at intelliment technologies pune ma'am is a data science analytics professional with her demonstrated history of implementing end to end business solutions for various industry sectors strong program and project management skills with experience in managing distributed teams and on site offshore project models her expertise include business intelligence applied statistics project management leadership development and yes data science and analytics so this was a very short introduction of us ma'am i am uh, very sure that during your session it's going to be a very wide horizon of your expertise which students are going to experience today so i hand over this platform to you ma'am over to you thank you thank you thank you bhagashi ma'am thank you team mit st i am really honored to get this invitation and get this platform and opportunity to interact with the participants here so i'll start uh, share my screen now so i hope my screen is visible uh yes it's visible okay So yeah, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining on Saturday morning. So uh, let this session be a little more interactive rather than you know me just talking and uh, you are on the listening mode. Uh, let us have the interaction more and more so that you know I'll be able to understand your expectations and then try to address to what exactly are you expecting out of this session. so frankly speaking it was uh, uh, bhagishri very difficult for me to you know choose what slides i should be showing and what not so uh, i mean it's really difficult i have a bunch of slides uh, which finally i have selected but if i get to know uh, the participants expectations from this session probably i'll be able to focus more on the uh, expectations and discussion and, and the points over here so can we quickly have uh, guys uh, a quick interaction and a quick uh, you know kind of expectation from your side what are you expecting from the session i don't know whether you would be able to talk about it or you can also ping it in a chat box so um, can we uh, can we unmute all the students now yes ma'am right thanks thanks team so i would like to understand uh, participants your expectations from this session of course i mean the title indicates what am i going to talk about it but again that is also a very vast topic so if you could help me to arrive at uh, you know the focus areas and your expectations that would be really really helpful so any any uh, anyone want to be sharing the thoughts here Rahul Mane has raised a hand. So Rahul, uh, you want to mention something here? I can also, uh, you know, open the chat box. Maybe you can type over here as well. So yes, students. How the data science is changing the project manager role, and and he need to evolve. Good. So I have a slide on this also. uh you know what are the roles and responsibilities at a high level i'll be touching on that i'll also speak to you about my role transitions i have multiple role transitions in my career as well so i'll be talking about that so that you can have a realistic context of looking at this how can we implement data science in project management sure i'll be talking about it since yes, i'll be talking mostly on the examples only i mean i am i'm actually avoiding the theoretical part of it how the data science is changing the operation management roles and he need to evolve sure what is mean by data science okay how can the topic be useful to construction okay so construction i have not taken any use case but maybe if required we can do that maybe in the next session but i will definitely talk about the data in construction field and how it will be applicable to it how can we pursue a career yeah i'll be talking about the future skills and careers as well great so i think pretty much uh, 90% of the topics i'll be covering the topics which i won't be able to cover in this session 
I'll try to cover it. Uh, I'll try to request the MIT team to have one more session maybe. And then we can discuss. Uh, so a lot of responses are coming team. And I'm glad to see that you are you are actually joining this with so many expectations. That put a little pressure also on me to cover all those topics. I, I'll definitely try to cover majority of the topics, data source and privacy. Again, privacy is something that I'll not be talking about the, in this session, but yes, we can definitely take that up. Operation works. Yeah, yeah. What is the use of data science analytics and how it can change the future of various industries? Of course, I'll be talking on this. Yeah, so thank you very much, team, for this overwhelming response. And uh, yeah, I got to know your expectations. Uh, as I said, I'll be talking on majority of the topics today. But uh, if I could not cover certain topics like yeah, data privacy and security is altogether a different topic in, in itself, or maybe the legalities of data and all that. So probably that is something that I'll not cover, not be able to cover in this session. But uh, I can definitely request the team to have one more session wherein we can cover the other topics as well. Good, thank you, thank you, team. So, can I start now? All right. So, I'll be mostly talking about uh, the industry landscape, the skills, the futures, the different uh, areas in which you know we can build our skills in, and then, as I said, the uh, use cases and uh, case studies that my team is working on. So, this is the data landscape only in India. I'm not talking about the global scenario. This is the data landscape in India. And again, guys, this is the data. Oh, so, this is the data landscape in India. I'm not talking about the global scenario. This is only the data that has been generated in India. And again, this is this is the data that has been captured in the first quarter of 2023. So, and the number is growing each uh, passing day. So as of today, you know, there are, uh, there must be more than 600 million smartphone users, 692 million internet users, a uh, lot of, you know, active cellular mobile connections and the social media users. So the data as of uh, January was saying that uh, 300 plus million terabytes of data is creating every, every single day. Now the question is, what can we do with this data? What are people doing with this data? And what are the businesses actually utilizing this data for? And this typically, you know, gives opportunities, birth to a lot of opportunities, which requires a lot of skills. And I'll be talking about all this today. So this is, you know, generating the needs of having the skills of the professionals in different areas like data analytics. Now, data analytics is again an umbrella term which covers, you know, uh, database management, data engineering, data preparation, data cleaning, data quality, uh, data visualization, data integration, data mining, and lot of, you know, uh, terms. So, umbrella term could be data analytics, data science, You, as you all know, based on the statistical analysis artificial intelligence, machine learning, UI, UX skills are actually emerging uh, a lot with, you know, a lot of data being visualized and seen and consumed by different consumers. Then, of course, computing comes into picture wherein a lot of cloud computing uh, opportunities are being uh, generated with the data is being pushed into the clouds. Uh, statistics is uh, core science. And a lot of, uh, many of the data science models are basically based on the statistical analysis or the core, core statistics or the science. Data governance, security and privacy is altogether another a big area wherein a lot of uh, things are basically taking place right now. And there are a lot of opportunities that could come in this domain as well. Then if you talk about this future skills for the future leaders, uh, and, you know, there are a lot of discussions that are happening around whether AI will eat up uh, the job of software professional, whether chat GPT could actually kill the entire developer uh, sector. So basically, uh, I mean, there is no black and white answer for that. Uh, but yes, definitely as and when we grow, we have to adapt to the future and new skills. Like if you could, you know, relate to the era wherein there were no computers and people used to do their work manually. So obviously those jobs are no more the jobs now, but no one is basically uh, want to do that as well. Because people, you know, they have upgraded, they have adopted the future skills and 
obviously no one would want to do a you know data entry into a, a manual ledger or you know even a passbook i don't know how many of you have recently visited even the banks no one in everyone is doing all the operations on a mobile you cannot imagine you know getting into those jobs now similarly there are certain jobs which could probably be automated with this future skills but what is something that will keep you updated or keep you going in this era is uh, of course the cognitive intelligence which is one of the ability to adapt to the change and adapt to it very very quickly of course digital literacy is required now this entire mit school is virtual which would have been difficult to imagine earlier a lot of schools are going completely digital nowadays the, thanks to the digital literacy that has been you know captured uh, during and after the covid uh, era emotional social intelligence and empathy is essentially required for a leader to you know to uh, understand the uh, team and get certain things done from them effective and fact based decision making is essentially important creative and in innovative mindset so these are some of the skills which are essentially required and as early as you adopt to it then probably it will be difficult it will not be difficult for you to adopt to the coming technology skills and uh, technology landscape so talking about the technology landscape if you only focus on the uh, business intelligence and data analytics technology landscape you can very easily that is very easily been explained here by gartner again this image is i understand little blur this is a paid report basically which is very difficult to have access to uh, it but somehow i could gather these facts from uh, by searching a lot over here so if you could see the gartner is suggesting that microsoft is way ahead it's a leader in this entire bi analytics domain and then followed by salesforce click was good but it is also still in the leader squadron but uh, of course microsoft and salesforce is something that is has taken up a lot of lead into this entire landscape similarly if you could look at the data integration uh, tool sets the informatica oracle ibm is definitely a leaders followed by microsoft sap as well talent is open source tool which is again capturing a very good uh, market in the data integration landscape am i going too fast i hope all of you are hearing me out all right then again this is the magic quadrant about the cloud ai developer services so aws is again a leader progressing very fast then microsoft google ibm so this is something that is a technology landscape again i mean this was something that was captured in march 2023 but it keeps on changing every every passing day so you probably would get a uh, a different say on area or different picture if you can recently look at certain uh, technology landscape over here opportunities so if you can see you know the opportunities are pretty much into all the industry sectors across all the uh, areas say customer analytics so when you say customer analytics i think you also have a topic on customer uh, entire subject on customer analytics so when it comes to customer obviously every business has a customer so you know starting from the financial services to banking supply chain telecom retail every every business sector obviously have a set of customers and customer analytics is very very important because you know you need to understand the customer patterns their uh, their buying capacities uh, segmentation of customers and lot of customer intelligence is nowadays being captured which is helping the businesses to come up with the uh, selling strategies so cross selling up selling which customer segment to target for which kind of product and, and this kind of data similarly operations analytics risk analytics as far as it comes to banks and financial services so i'll be talking about some of the use cases in the subsequent slides again hr analytics is very very useful in identifying you know uh, the employees who are at the risk of attrition and take the appropriate measures to you know reduce the attrition or uh, maybe uh, identify the attrition analysis what are the reasons why employees are leaving and and lot of other areas where in hr analytics come into picture uh here i would like to talk about one uh, very very disruptive data innovation i would say again that is not something very new we have been all of us are consumers of that data disruption since more than 2 3 years now in any cases 
So I'm talking about Ola and Uber business models. That entire business model, if you see, is based on the data. What, what do you need? What, what do uh, you know? it requires to run a business like Ola or Uber? Uh, if you see most of the factors, most of the components of that business model already used to exist. So, you know, we used to have taxis and cabs earlier. Auto rickshaws and cabs they were there. Consumers were there. Many consumers basically were going from uh, one place to other using auto rickshaws and, and cabs, right? Auto rickshaws to bahut pehle se, uh, operations mein hai. So what make this Ola uh, disruption is because they actually connected the supply with the demand through the compute and the data. So Ola and Uber is highly disruptive data models. And then comes, you know, a lot of other things like, you know, Zomato, hai, Swiggy, hai, then a lot of, you know, uh, nowadays like Kisan Connect app, hai, which is basically connecting the farmers to uh, the consumers. So these are the kind, then a lot of things into agriculture as well. So agriculture, a uh, lot of people used to fall sick because of uh, pesticides and uh, a lot of people were actually getting sick. So those are the operations which are being automated. Then uh, soil detection or water detection, these are a lot of operations which have been automated to which basically, you know, uh, is, is the major disruption which is affecting the life of many, life of many people. And that is what is I call as disruption. So if you're talking about opportunities, they are literally enormous. Almost every business or every industry sector generates a data. And uh, wherever there is data, there are opportunities in data analytics and data science. So I'll take a pause over here and I'll just try to address the questions if there are any up till now. Again, maybe we can... Uh, Either you can talk or you can you can paste all your queries in a chat box. Meaning of data science. Okay, I'll talk about it. It's kind of industrial is the question that is asked by Kiran. Kiran, can you please elaborate on this question? So data, if you're saying data science, so no, data science is not only for the industry as I have recently even knew the examples of, uh, no, it's not only based on industries, but yes, uh, many of the solutions are industry-based solutions. Yes, of course, it affects the marketing and sales function as well. AI will have, you know, interventions and interactions across all the industry sector sectors. It will definitely have impact, positive as well as negative impact on uh, different industry sectors. But as I said, if you keep uh, yourself updated with the upcoming and the latest thing in the market, that will not, imp the impact would definitely not be much. So one question is, do we need to have computer science background for knowing data science? Because the data and data science is a new oil. So computer science background, see, I would say data science is definitely different from the programming thing. So the first question that has been asked by, I think, uh, someone here, Maras. Meaning of data science, I'll elaborate that. So meaning of data science is, uh, if I have to, you know, answer this question in one single line, it is science applied on the data. Now, why? Why sciences need to be applied on the data to basically uh, take out different insights and actionable insights from the data. So I'll be talking again more about this in our use cases. And that is why, you know, I requested Bhageshri ma'am to uh, allow me to involve a lot of use cases because explaining data science theoretically becomes very difficult. So how data science or data analytics can be applied to different fields, 
different sectors and not only industry sectors it can be applicable to uh, any any part of the society as well so i'll be talking more on it in my uh, subsequent slides what is the difference between business analyst data analyst and data scientist role yeah sure again i'll be talking about it but you know uh, these are more or less uh, the terms and the the line between these roles is very very thin like say for example data engineer and data scientist so sometimes a person has to actually get into all those slabs of data to effectively deliver the data models so data scientist typically is required for data modeling but then that data scientist also has to sometimes understand how the data is being prepared so data preparation is generally typically called upon as a role of a data engineer which you know analyzes the data prepares the data plays data and given to uh for modeling but even the data scientist has to understand that what kind of data cleaning has been done so for example like null values or zero values there are multiple ways to deal with the null values or zero values a data scientist needs not always but sometimes needs to understand that how the data is been prepared and cleaned and given otherwise it will be a little bit superficial to you know go on doing that by the data supplied by someone else so the lines are very thin and these are somewhere you know the labels given to the roles typically uh, the kras or what kind of projects you are working upon the role and the expectation from that project defines what are actual the activities that a person has to do over there yeah so to implement result of data analytics which other platform i will be talking about it in my uh, subsequent slides yeah so harsh is asking what is the actual work work role job description of data scientist and why again uh, harsh i'll be talking about this in my subsequent slides gartner landscape of data can you explain more so archana for that i'll need to have access to the gartner report and as i said that report is a paid report so if we can get access to that report definitely i'll, I'll talk more on uh, how gartner actually comes up with that landscape and uh, what exactly is the meaning of leaders and visionaries and what are the plus and minuses of each technology but that's a paid report we have to purchase that and then we'll be able to talk more about it yeah so what uh, captain vijay is asking what disruption in daily life in terms of data science or analytical use so i'll try to cover this uh today i have actually uh, come up with more and more industry scenarios or industry use cases as in alignment with the topic i actually had conducted one more session uh, last to last month and the title was democratizing data science so you know how data science can be democratized and democratized meaning how it can be useful in our day to day life of every person so i may not be able to talk about that today because that is all together another uh, session that will be required so i'll request uh, bhagishri ma'am if she can have one more session or workshop will definitely be able to talk about it but today the focus is on industry scenarios i'm sorry about it sure ma'am yeah so uh, one more question shantanu uh, is asking do we need to have computer science background for knowing data science so uh, not necessarily shantanu computer science background definitely helps you to come you know apply the tools and technologies very very quickly but that is not something that is essentially required and nowadays there are a lot of drag and drop and ui related tools wherein you don't really have to go and do the programming but statistics is something that uh, definitely you need to understand because unless you understand what is regression what is clustering and what is you know uh, the different uh, distributions statistical modeling it will be difficult to apply because data science is all about those data science techniques so knowing statistics definitely is required computer background may or may not be required yeah can some from economics background enter into data science with supply chain we have there are a couple of uh, you know members in my team who are from economics background and doing really well in data science so definitely this functional knowledge or this domain knowledge is definitely very very useful in uh, in data science 
how can we use data science in, in project management? Yeah, I'll try to cover all these questions. Thank you again. Thank you very much for this. This shows your interest and involvement in this session. And I'm really glad so many questions. I would definitely try to answer all of them here, at least 90% of them. Someone from pharma can enter this field. Yes, someone from pharma can definitely enter this field. I'll have one use case on uh, medical healthcare domain as well. Sure, sure. I, I'm sharing the case studies and use cases. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. That shows your interest and involvement. I'll, I'll definitely, uh, with more energy, I'll definitely go towards the next uh, slides now. Shall I? All right. As I said, you know, the focus of this session is on industry use cases. So I won't be able to talk much about the other use cases today, but we'll definitely try to have one more session where I'll be talking about the uh, democratization of data science. So market basket analysis is a very common, uh, commonly used technique in uh, data analytics or business intelligence field. And you know, the uh, slide itself is self-explanatory that what exactly you mean by market basket analysis. It, it analyzes the basket of a customer to understand various associations between the products that has been bought. So a very, very interesting uh, uh, analysis or study that came out long back in uh, early 2000 when, you know, BI was just starting getting into the market and this, this use case is from US uh, I think it, it was from Walmart, Walmart which uh, actually reveals that the beers and diapers are being, you know, bought very, very frequently. Now, why? A very interesting analysis and study. If you get a uh, chance, maybe you can go and uh, read this after that session. That And why, why, what is the reason why beer and diaper, which... Uh, typically is very difficult to imagine the association, you know, generally hum log kya association imagine karte hai ki uh, bread and eggs or bread and milk or milk and biscuits or bread and butter, you know, uh, or fruits maybe. So ye bahut hi general association, very common association hai ki these are the items which are typically bought together, pen and pencil or maybe pencil and rubber, etc. But beer and diaper, I mean, that was a very shocking revelation from one of the data that has been captured by one of the uh, chain of supermarkets. Now, as long as soon as this revelation comes, this story comes into the market, and I'm talking about, you know, the initial days, 2002, 2004 of uh, early BI days. So people started analyzing and understanding what could be the reason of, you know, beer and diaper, which otherwise association has been brought together. Then different analogies came in. Then uh, some typically uh, new moms who so are in the house, they send their fathers to buy the diapers. And then while you know, buying the diapers, the fathers are typically buying the beers as well. Uh, then another analogy was like the moms are uh, at home. So they can't go outside for eating and having their drinks. So while going while purchasing the, you know, things for their kids, they are actually purchasing the beer. So these are different stories that actually could, uh, different analogies that has been brought in by different, different uh, users. But yes, I mean, that is the fact that uh, beer and diapers were purchased very, very frequently together. Now, from that, you know, people started understanding that a lot of analysis has been done on this market basket. And one of the analysis, not for the retail client, but I'll be talking about uh, the analysis that we have been recently done for a leading insurance firm in India. Now, how you must be thinking how market basket is applicable to insurance. So we'll talk about it. So yeah, the client is a leading insurance firm in India. And the requirement was like the to automate or to provide the recommendation engine. Now, recommendation for what? The recommendation for the uh, policies. So, cross and upscaling the policies. So, how you know uh, the association of policies go well? So, say for example, if you're targeting a family with uh, a husband, wife, and a kid, what kind of you know policies that you can bunch together? 
and and sell that to a customer so that it makes sense to that family and those policies have been you know complementing each other or maybe the timelines have been uh, when you are getting the returns of that policy <clears throat> it has to be slot across the time as and when you know there are the important milestones in the life of a customer so say for example the kid is growing up and uh, say 9th 10th and 11th or maybe uh, during his engineering studies or maybe when the kid is now ready to go abroad for his uh, higher education so how the disbursements can be done for different policies in that family for different people so that is the kind of analysis that we have done on the data given by this uh, insurance provider and the solution was given by analyzing the existing policies the customer data and provide the insights on uh, automated inputs for competitive policy information. So one policy uh, versus the other policy, what are the competitive benefits of uh, both the policies? Identification of cross and upselling, as I said, you know, the uh, selling policies to a, a group of families, wherein the uh, family size is different, the uh, age of family members is different. How do we actually make a package or a bundle of policies to cater to the needs of a family altogether rather than one single person? So that was a very good recommendation engine and we got a huge response to that engine by uh, that that has been informed to us by our client. So the tools and techniques that we used that time was, of course, the market basket analytics. Ruby site is one of our own uh, homegrown product. I'll be talking a little about it uh, during our last slides. So these were the techniques that were uh, typically used while this market basket analysis. So this was a very good use case for, and of course, I mean, though we have done this for an insurance firm, this typical use case can be applicable across all the industry sectors so retail i just spoke about the examples how different uh, you know products have been purchased together by the customer based on that there can be different decisions that can be made by the shop owners like the placement of the products or maybe some of the combo offers uh, by the owner of the retail store it can also be uh, applicable in the pharma domain wherein you can you know uh, so typically with the antibiotics anti-acids have been prescribed so how can you have you no know, uh, take advantage or leverage on this specific association where you know uh, typically doctors are subscribing together so market basket analysis is definitely applicable across all the industry sectors Moving to the next uh, use case, social media sentiment analytics. So this was the solution given to one of the top universities in Pune, just like MIT, for their uh, futuristic academic uh, programs. The requirement was sentiment analytics based on the social media platform. So they had given uh, data from uh, their Facebook pages, LinkedIn pages, Instagram, Twitter and lot of social media pages that they were actually maintaining that data was uh, given to us and we were actually expected to perform the analysis, identify the patterns and basically come up with the sentiment analytics on various programs offered by the university, which brought the following insights and foresights to them. So what are the most popular programs? So say, for example, if that uh, um, use case would have been executed today and we would have come to know that data science or AI is something that is the most sought after program or most popular program, then university would start, uh, you know, focusing more on that program. So more resources can be allotted to that program. Um, and yeah, yeah, there are certain requirements for program customizations. You know, people were actually asking that can you combine AI and uh, some other program together or can you customize this program for this 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 so this is these were the requirements that were coming and then which were very very helpful for that university to then then customize their uh, programs yeah again this is pretty much is the uh, requirement by almost all the uh, universities or institutes that uh, predicting the admission statistics how many admissions will happen this year and into which program or which branch that is something that is a very 
very popularly uh, requested use case that we had given to that university. And of course, dropout statistics. So, you know, with the centralized admission process, people sometimes, you know, take the admission and then drop out when they uh, get admission in other universities, something like that. So, uh, predicting the dropouts based on various students' uh, pattern, I would say, sentiment, student sentiments, the way they are commenting, the way they are taking admissions and all that. So these were some of the things that were given to that uh, university. Of course, the tools and techniques used were, again, Rubyscape is one of our homegrown platform. I'll talk a little about it at the end of this presentation. Uh, Python was typically taken up for the, uh, you know, data, uh, connection data, cleaning data preparation kind of a thing. Uh, machine learning tools were used for this. So typically the text analytics and the text mining was used. So this is all about the social media sentiment analytics for one of the top universities in Pune. The next is healthcare. So predicting a set of antibiotics to be given to the patient, the client was a leading healthcare firm is in the US. So basically, you know, this use case was, uh, we designed first for one of my friends. Uh, she is a gynec, gynec surgeon. And typically, you know, while we discussing uh, some of the options of applications of uh, data science and healthcare again again uh, uh, long back uh, five to six years back we were talking about uh, so she was actually talking to me about uh, the patients that are coming to her and how uh, so patients typically come with uh, you know some symptoms ki uh, yes ho raha hai waisa ho raha hai and uh, uske baad she uh, used to prescribe certain tests to that patient now, this test ka result aane se pehle, like, uh, for example, if the patient ke blood test ke results are coming to the time, in that time, mein how do we, we cannot just leave the patient untreated. We have to treat the patient. Now, we have to say we typically treat them by the guesswork. That this can and that is why let us start with this antibiotics. But then she was actually discussing me, is there any scientific way of predicting a set of antibiotics to be, to be given to the patient before her or his test results actually uh, comes. So initially we had done it for her and then later on that was, uh, you know, made live for a leading healthcare firm in the US. So the requirement was predicting a right set of antibiotics to be given to a patient before getting his or test results. And the solution was given by analyzing various patients' data and recommending the right set of antibiotic based on the symptoms and history of a patient. So this helped in treating the patient right before getting his or her results. Again, we had to train that model a lot with a huge amount of data. So initially she started practicing that with her own knowledge plus our model. And when she started you know, realizing the results, later on she started believing on that model more and more. And then, then basically we sold it up to a a healthcare firm as well, wherein she was associated. So that was a very good, uh, you know, we can say that democratizing a data science through a doctor, possibly. So tools uh, was machine learning Python. That time it was done completely on Python. Later on, we actually have, uh, you know, uh, migrated that to SAS. And of course, Oracle for you know, analyzing the data of the uh, patients and analyzing the patients of uh, pa patterns of patient uh, historical data. Another use case is uh, customer risk analysis. This was something that we have uh, done for a leading bank in Singapore. The requirement typically was, you know, uh, the customer risk analysis and, um, you know, kind of predicting any kind of approach because of the customer who is at risk. So identifying an, uh, anomalies, basically. So the solution was given by analyzing news and sentiment analysis of the customer entity and arrive at a risk factor associated with every customer. That was basically the focus area for this specific use case. Again, the tools and techniques were used. Machine learning, Python 
oracle again lot of you know the sentiment analysis was done so how uh yeah one more uh source was the feedback analysis so how customer is basically commenting or you know providing information based on that uh, sentiment analysis plus uh the news various news related to this uh, customer plus you can you can also follow his uh, personal uh, tweets and all that so these are the kind of data as far as we could do in the ethical manner we had done that identifying and extract, extracting entity was a challenge and then you know relating that with the uh, bank customer so that was challenging but yes that was the risk rank has been given to each of the customer and then that has been given and the outliers typically uh, a customer with the highest risk was actually highlighted and given to a bank so that you know the bank can then take up certain more actions so every time bank will not be able to provide you the personal data of the customer although you're working with them for the uh and signed an indian all that they first of all try to identify how much they can do it themselves so uh, the model that has been developed by us on the test data they first ran on their real data so banks are typically a little bit conservative when you know giving access to their data even to a developers or customers over the period of time that happened but initially it was done only on the external data and only on the basis of the uh, sentiment analysis the other use cases uh, again this was a very interesting use case that we have recently given to one of the banks the video analytics and if you can see <clears throat> we are actually there is a ruby scale model over here and uh, we are monitoring the uh, cashiers the vault room the cashiers room and there were certain expectations and you know uh, <clears throat> I, I unfortunately i don't have that video access right away with me but yes we have actually uh, identified different anomalies like uh, when the room is uh, unattended, there is no one in that room, the room full of cash and there is, there is no one in that room. Or maybe uh, there are unauthorized entries, so person who is responsible or who is expected to be in the room, other than that, if anyone enters into the room, or if there are, you know, many customers who are standing in a queue and there were uh, no one entering them. So these are some of the uh, anomalies which has been identified and we, we used to alert, keep alerting that. So whoever is monitoring this was actually getting the alerts that, hey, there is no person who in the cash room or there is a long queue or, you know, there is someone who is unauthorized entered into the room. These are the alerts that we used to continuously give to a person who is monitoring that. And based on that, he can uh, then take the actions. Flood prediction analysis for Kerala district. This is another use case that was basically the kind of uh, service to society that was done based on the open data that is available image processing for brain mri so output prediction of uh, the tumor or various diseases that could possibly be appear uh, by analyzing the image of an eye and then machine vibration analytics is again something that has been given to one of the uh, clients in the manufacturing domain wherein we actually were analyzing the vibration of the machine data and based on that there were various outcomes like machine failures or machine downtimes or wear and tear of the parts various analysis was given to that so like this and you know there can be enormous use cases which can be uh, we, we can discuss in the field of data science and analytics again I have one more case study which we'll be talking about but I'll just stop for a moment to take up the question so far. So are there any questions uh, on the part that has been covered till now? I have a few more slides to go on. I'll be talking about the uh, detail about a case study and a project that we have recently delivered to one of our manufacturing clients. But till that time, are there any questions? I'll, I'll be happy to have the questions. Okay, the question by Paris is what is mean by customer risk analysis? So customer risk analysis is typically, you know, identifying the customers who are at risk. And uh, so, you know, uh, the Sybil score, the score is given based on your, uh, you know, credit card activities or the credit score has been given based on your uh, different operations or activities that you are performing with that 
card. So this is exactly how is the customer risk analysis, wherein the customer has been given the rank, a risk rank based on the various activities that he is performing. We'll be talking again, uh, maybe in the next session, we can, we can take up an entire session on the risk analysis and how different, uh, or customer analytics probably, you already have a subject, uh, entire subject on customer analytics. We can, we can talk about more during that session. But at a high level, I, I'm assuming that I have answered your question. What is sentiment analysis and how it can be used as a data science? Yeah, so uh, sentiment analysis is basically uh, the thinking patterns of a customer, what the customer is thinking. And the more you know your customer, there are more opportunities of cross-selling and upscaling. So that is all about the sentiment analysis. And again, there are various case studies, use cases, which are, which are being done on this uh, sentiment analysis. So, I mean, you can assume in political uh, scenario wherein uh, news, uh, news channels, jo hai, exit polls. So before even there are uh, the results of the elections are, are out, they typically provide you the exit polls. So, uh, one of the factors could in that was the sentiment analysis, what people are talking about a particular politician, whether they will vote for that politician or not. So this is, this can also be based on the sentiments. What is the use in the construction industry? Uh, so I mean, yeah, construction industry, uh, Unfortunately, I have not taken any example or use case in that industry, but uh, predicting, you know, the cost and time. So nowadays, you know, there are multiplexes that are, you know, taken place. So predicting the cost, predicting the timelines, when can I get access to uh, or possession of the home that I'm building in, in a specific uh, complex or society. Then the quality of material that has been used, the longevity of the house based on the quality of material that is used. So these are some of the use cases that will be applicable even for the construction industry. Okay. So Deepika, ni ek question mandle na hai ki ab Marathi madhe sangu shakta ka ho nakis bolu shakte maachi pan matru bhasha Marathi asli amain bolu shakte Marathi madhe. Ta Deepika kuthla ek khada question tumala vichara hai sa asal jaise mian answer Marathi madhe deu shakel tar please vichara. Prabhuni, Mr. Prabhuni, a question which I is this application based on the historical data present or has application for new business product market capture? Prabhu, can you please elaborate this question? So application would definitely be accessing the historical data and based on that, it will predict the future. So, you know, uh, get hold of the past data, analyze the past data, predict the future data and then see the correction or the efficiency of the predicted result. This is typically is the pattern in all data science project. So that's a picture where you can elaborate on that. How data science is changing the operations management role? Operations management role, you know, what you can do is you can automate a lot of operations specifically operations management sell the process automation product automation specific supply chain process sell je apan automate karu shakto industrial automation iiot so iiot is all about industrial automation i'll be talking about the use case in manufacturing domain okay so thank you again. Thank you for your responses with a lot of questions. That shows here you are, uh, you know, enjoying this session, your interest in this session. That is also giving me the a lot of energy boost to now present with much more energy. So I'll be talking about a case study in uh, dynamic dressing. Me madhe madhe Marathi bolna chapan prayatna kare. Zar kami visale ta please mala atman karundia. So this specific case study was done for one of our client. The client is a leading global automotive supplier. Has a client across the Europe, but it's plants ahead. Jakey, 
ऑटोमोबाईलचे जे पार्ट असतात त्याला मॅन्युफॅक्चर करतात जसं की गिअर गिअर हा एक पार्ट आहे ऑटोमोबाईलचा त्याला मॅन्युफॅक्चर करतात त्याच्यानंतर त्या सगळ्या पार्टची असेंबली करतात आणि नंतर ते दे ऍक्च्युली सेल दॅट सेंड दॅट ऑफ फॉर इन द इन द शोरूम सो दॅट इज व्हॉट इज अ क्लायंट प्रोफाईल हा जो क्लायंट आहे आपला मोस्टली युरोपमध्ये आहे पण त्याच्यानंतर इट इट वॉज एक्सपांडेड अक्रॉस म्हणजे जेव्हा आम्ही त्या क्लायंट बरोबर काम केलं तेव्हा दॅट वॉज युरोप कॅनडामध्ये होतं बट तो ग्रोईंग क्लायंट असल्यामुळे नाव दॅट क्लायंट हॅव देअर दॅट प्लांट्स अक्रॉस डिफरंट different regions as well not only in europe so they have over you know 170 plus 1000 plus employees which focused on delivering superior value to customers through their innovative world class manufacturing uh, units yeah manufacturing uh, more than 3 million uh, vehicles at the present automate at the present manufacture gelele ahe so such a big client त्याचं बॅकग्राऊंड असं होता की थोडस मॅन्युफॅक्चरिंग रिलेटेड आहे मी सिम्प्लिफाय करण्याचा प्रयत्न करते पण तरी पण काही क्वेश्चन असतील तर आपण या केस स्टडी नंतर आपण घेऊया ते क्वेश्चन सो गिअर होनिंग ही एक प्रोसेस असते याच्याने काय होतं की गिअर्सला होनिंग केलं जातं म्हणजे मग ती गिअर्सची इफिशियन्सी वाढते आणि गिअर आपण जेव्हा टाकतो आपण सगळ्यांनी गाडी चालवलेलीच आहे व्हेकल चालवलेलीच आहे तर गिअरचं काय काम असतं हे आपल्याला माहिती आहे सो हा हा जो प्लांट होता हा गिअर मॅन्युफॅक्चरिंग होता आणि तो होनिंग प्रोसेस जी आहे ती आम्ही याच्यामध्ये ऑटोमेट केलेली आहे सोनाली मॅम हा सॉरी टू इंटरव्ह मेजॉरिटी ऑफ द क्राऊड इज अंडरस्टँडिंग हिंदी अँड इंग्लिश ओके सो आय वुड रिक्वेस्ट ऍट लिस्ट टू अंडरस्टँड हिंदी बेनिफिशियल फॉर ऑल द स्टुडंट्स शुअर 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 मला एक मध्ये रिक्वेस्ट आली होती मराठी बोलण्याची म्हणून मी तेवढं मिक्स बोलते आहे बट शुअर आय मीन आय विल ट्राय टू टॉक इन इंग्लिश अँड हिंदी अस येस येस ओके सो दिस स्पेसिफिक प्रोजेक्ट वॉज अबाउट या गिअर होनिंग प्रोसेस सो दॅट गिअर इज बीन होन्ड बाय अ होनिंग टूल अँड टिपिकली व्हॉट दे युज टू डू इज दॅट दिस होनिंग टूल this used to be often dressed with a dressing wheel after a fixed number of uh, work pieces that it is sharpening so any deviation in this dressing is transferred to the work place leading to the production parts and the quality of that production so it was essentially required ki ye jo honing tool hai ye isne kitne gears ko hon uh, karna chahiye so that was you know the background तो हम लोगों ने जब इसको सोल्यूशन ये दिया है उससे पहले क्या हो रहा था दैट होनिंग टूल वॉज बेसिकली टेकिंग अप अ फिक्स्ड साइकल्स सो से फॉर एग्जांपल 300 साइकल्स तो हर 300 साइकल्स के बाद जो है वो टूल रिप्लेस किया जाता था अब कैसा है कि द होनिंग टूल कैन हैव डिफरेंट कैपेसिटीज एक होनिंग टूल हो सकता है कि विच कैन एक्चुअली कंप्लीट दी फोर हंड्रेड साइकल्स एज वेल and there are honing tools which can actually uh, are effective up to 200 only but ho kya raha tha ki har time wo 300 cycles ke baad change ho raha tha isse kya ho raha tha ki koi tool jiski jyada karne ki capacity hai wo pehle hi hum log nikal de rahe the which was actually having a huge cost impact matlab jo tool aur aur kuch din chal sakta hai usko hum pehle hi retire kar rahe hain that is a uh, impact on the cost एंड दुसरी तरफ ऐसा हो रहा था कि जो होनिंग टूल खराब हो रहा है फिर भी हम लोग यूज कर रहे हैं बिकॉज वो तीन सौ साइकिल तक के हमको स्ट्रेटेजी यूज करना है सो दैट वॉज इम्पैक्टिंग द क्वालिटी ऑफ द एंड प्रोडक्ट तो इस प्रॉब्लम से क्या हो रहा था कि बोथ क्वालिटी एज वेल एज कॉस्ट इन साम केसेस क्वालिटी वॉज गेटिंग अफेक्टेड इन साम केसेस द कॉस्ट वॉज गेटिंग अफेक्टेड तो हम लोगों ने इसको डायनामिक किया है कि हर एक होनिंग टूल की जो कपेसिटी है वो अलग अलग है so latest identify the actual capacity of the honing tool predict the capacity and then when it arrives at that specific number uske baad hi usko replace karna hai to uske baad wo dynamic start ho gaya to koi honing tool 250 tak ke chalta tha koi 300 tak ke chalta tha koi 350 tak ke chalta tha so that is the impact or that is the automation the process automation that we have actually delivered using this uh, specific project सो so, उसका की ऑब्जेक्टिव क्या था टू बिल्ड अ मॉडल टू अराइव एट अ डायनामिक नंबर ऑफ रेसिंग साइकिल इंटरवल 
for the honing tool to eliminate the possibility of underutilization as well as overutilization of the tool, maintaining the same quality of output. So this is exactly what I have explained you. Ki, वो पार्ट का ओवर यूटिलाइजेशन भी होना नहीं चाहिए ओवर यूटिलाइजेशन होने से क्या होता है कि क्वालिटी इंपैक्ट होता है अंडर यूटिलाइजेशन भी नहीं होना चाहिए क्योंकि अंडर यूटिलाइजेशन होने से क्या होता है कॉस्ट इंपैक्ट होता है सो हाउ टू अराइव एट अ डायनामिक नंबर टू बेसिकली चेंज दैट होनिंग साइकिल आफ्टर दैट स्पेसिफिक ड्रेसिंग साइकिल सो दैट वॉज द की ऑब्जेक्टिव सो इफ आई हैव टू गिव यू एग्जाम्पल ऑफ हमारा डे टू डे लाइफ सो मे बी अशू अ ट्रेकिंग शू तो ट्रेकिंग शू अगर हम लोग एक साल तक यूज कर रहे हैं तो कोई ट्रेकिंग शूज जो होता है वो एक साल तक चलता है कोई छह महीने चलता है कोई दो साल तक भी चलता है अब एक साल चलने वाले को अगर हमने छह महीने में शूज चेंज कर लिया तो दैट विल बी अ वेस्ट मनी इम्पैक्ट होता है उसमें एज अपोज टू एक साल चलने वाला शूज अगर हम दो साल यूज कर रहे हैं तो दैट हैव यू नो एक रिस्क होता है कि स्लिप हो सकता है वो शू जिसमें आपको हार्म हो सकता है सो so, ये एक एग्जाम्पल हमारे डे टू डे लाइफ में है कि हाउ डू यू प्रेडिक्ट द एक्चुअल लाइफ ऑफ अ शू और अनादर एग्जाम्पल कुड भी एक्चुअल लाइफ ऑफ अ टायर ऑफ योर व्हीकल अभी जैसे रेनी सीजन चल रहा है बहुत ज्यादा वियर एंड टीयर टायर हो गया एंड स्पेसिफिकली अगर आप टू व्हीलर चला रहे हैं तो देयर इज अ रिस्क देर इज अ पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ स्कीडिंग द वहीकल विच कैन हैव लॉट ऑफ डैमेज टू योर वहीकल एज वेल एज यू हु आर राइडिंग ऑन दैट वहीकल एट द सेम टाइम अगर टायर अच्छा होने के बाद भी आप रिप्लेस कर रहे हो तो दैट इज ऑल्सो कॉस्ट इम्पैक्ट वाई अननेसेसरीली यू विल चेंज द टायर एंड इन्वेस्ट इन टू अ टायर विन द टायर कैन स्टिल रन फॉर कपल ऑफ मोर मंथ्स यू गेटिंग मी so this is exactly is the you know predicting the wear and tear of a part of a machine ki uska part exactly kitne time tak chal sakta hai utna predict karna so if imagine if there is a a process which will predict the life of a tire of your vehicle ki aapne vehicle ka tire aaj purchase kiya hai 2 saal tak ye chalega 2 saal ke baad aapne aap 1.5 saal mein aapne fir se ek baar analysis karwaya ki ye tire aur 6 mahina chal sakta hai 1 saal chal sakta hai ki abhi isko nikalna zaruri hai so this is exactly is the process which is related to the honing tool of a uh, gear honing tool of a machine and yes optimal utilization of the tool without hampering the quality of the job this is another objective so the problem was like devising a method for making the dressing cycle interval that is the number of parts honed per dressing cycle dynamic as opposed to fixed interval so it was earlier it was fixed and the uh, problem was like how to make it dynamic another problem statement was predicting the life span of the honing tool so we just talked about you know predict the life span of uh, the tire of your vehicle exactly same thing can be applicable over here wherein we are actually predicting the life span of the honing tool and of course ensuring the zero impact on the gear quality while making the dressing process dynamic and then establishing the correlation between the vibration frequencies and quality characteristics so ye jo machine tha jo ki ye honing kar raha tha uska jo vibration data tha that was given to us and based on that vibration uh, data analysis we actually arrived at this uh, solution of this entire problem as i said the set of vibration frequencies that was given to us and we were actually identified the uh, set of uh, frequencies that are actually making sense a lot for this uh, predicting the life of a tool machine learning models were developed to predict the values of product characteristics from the vibration frequencies and specific frequencies were isolated to monitor and considered for setting up a dynamic dressing cycle intervals for the uh, prediction of the life so the team composition was we required a subject matter expert who actually was you know knowing the uh, how that honing tool and how the gear honing works so you know i was answering to someone that uh, how the 
subject matter expertise from different domain are essentially required into data science field so if you are providing a solution to a manufacturing industry obviously your manufacturing sme is required whenever you are providing solution to a healthcare industry so i we, we actually talked about that uh, doctors and healthcare example wherein that doctor was essentially important to uh, you know uh, help us analyzing and modeling the data or if you are providing a solution to a hospitality domain to a construction domain to a uh, any any agriculture or any other domain so the expertise in that domain is essentially required which will actually help us analyzing and then modeling and predicting the data so uh, sme in uh, every industry is required as far as it, it comes to data science and data analytics solutions then technical advisor project manager data engineers data scientists and uh, tech ops basically is the deployment team who is responsible for deploying the model into the uh, client environment or production so this was the team who was primarily responsible for delivering the solution what was the business impact so this basically uh, reduced a lot of uh, manual work and optimized uses of the owning tool was possible because of this and the solution can be replicated easily and affordably on owning machines across the manufacturing line this actually typically saves the uh, 49k euros per annum for a client by automating this process and with a reduction of of course 0.4 euro per tooling machine cost so this is what was the overall business impact that was achieved by uh, this solution this was recently given to one of our client and yeah the success story is that the solution is in production and live and our client is using this solution in many of the uh, plants in europe as well as india so this is what is about the uh, this case study uh, i'll quickly uh, talk about the tool which was uh, instrumental in delivering these case studies and then i'll definitely take the question and answers so rubyscape is a end to end data science data innovation platform which helps in uh, the end to end processing of the data right from capturing the data from different sources to actually preparing cleaning and uh, modeling the data visualizing the data and lot of data mining and data integration activities by forming the data pipelines and all so using this tool we had actually given the uh, recently discussed solution to one of our clients and this tool has been uh, developed by uh, my organization where i am currently part of intelliment which is having a long 8 18 years of history in data science and data analytics solutions so if you could see we have given solutions to across all the industries including banking financial automotive consulting and different uh, industry sectors all our clients are across the india we have our development centers in australia europe india and and singapore so i am part of this uh, organization and intelliment has developed a rubyscape which is the end to end data science platform we are also having a academia lake you know ruby university which is uh, responsible for uh, engaging with different academia models so future skilling programs the innovation incubation support real life projects and all that so we are definitely uh, key to have these kind of associations with different mit institutes as well so career paths different career paths that we offer to uh, different talents so you know the technology verticals like uh, you can start as a software engineer then you can become a team lead project manager program director you can also take up the path of you know solution specialist sme and solution architect then different product hierarchy like you know solution designer product manager product director these are kind of the product leadership roles so technology roles product leadership roles as well as process lead functional manager group manager unit director these are the business leadership programs so these are you know various uh, careers or role uh, and again it is not limited to this these are some of i have taken some of the very very selective roles the roles can be many and uh, but yeah i mean can be divided across technology product and business leadership roles 
I'll be quickly talking about my role transitions as I promised in the beginning of this. So currently I'm working as a director of PMO with Intelligent Technologies. My journey also started long back in 1995. So I've completed my master's in statistics in 1995. And after that, I started working as a uh, developer in ID industry. Again, not very much related to statistics at that point of time, but yes, that time, you know, uh, I tried applying my statistical analysis skill to the data. And then, you know, the technology journey to uh, team lead, senior consultant, project manager. And of course, you know, uh, during this journey, I also had uh, one or two career breaks. So we shifted to Pune. I am originally from Nagpur and uh, we shifted to Pune and I have taken a sabbatical uh, for uh, family reasons. Then I started, you know, freelancing. I was associated as a visiting faculty with various institutes and uh, universities in Pune and around Pune. Uh, I am also the advisory board member of various management as well as engineering colleges and institutes today, wherein I am actually uh, collaborating with them to come up with, as my expertise are in data science and uh, data analytics, uh, I am actually collaborating with them to come up with uh, various uh, programs related to data science and data analytics and how we can, you know, uh, breach the institute industry gap and how can we provide more and more opportunities to the learners to basically work with us to provide uh, the part of these kind of use cases and solutions. And of course, I mean, uh, after that, again, I have taken a, a, a family break to uh, for a work-life balance, basically. My daughter was moving on to abroad and, you know, uh, her career move, so supported her into that. Then I again started here. So I, I'm, uh, IntelliMint has given me the opportunity to start my career 2.0 as well as 3.0, wherein then I started with the program management process excellence. And then uh, currently I'm working here as a uh, director PMO. I'm looking forward to many more transitions as well. So this is what is my quick uh, career journey in order to give you a contextual, you know, information about different roles and uh, verticals of your skills and careers. So I think that's all from now. And again, I'll be happy to have questions. So maybe you can uh, also, maybe uh, Bhagashi ma'am, if you want to unmute and ask, let them ask the question because that will help to, you know, have the elaborative questions uh, over this. Yes, sure, ma'am. Oh, uh, yes, Onka, can we unmute them? Rajpal have raised the hand. Are they unmuted? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Rajpal, yes, you can ask your question. Hello. Yes, Rajpal. Yeah, uh, ma'am, so in the social media uh, sentimental analysis, uh, I just wanted to know a uh, little more in depth, like uh, what all, if, if you are if you are comfortable to share, like what were the um, attributes or the parameters that were being considered uh, while uh, predicting those who would drop out or uh, like uh, take back their admission or uh, withdraw their admission and uh, hmm. like uh, which models or like uh, how was the uh, approach towards that because uh, only a single model or a single way of approach was um, enough or like there were many multiple error like uh, trial and error methods were there like if this is working or not then the yes yes accuracy was checked how yes. can you please sure sure so you know in uh, in real life there is not one single model which works or one single approach that will work you always have to keep trying multiple things uh majority of uh, so you know uh, you you always have to start with the failure because the first model that you have built and applied will never work. So you have to keep evolving. You have to keep observing. You have to keep uh, exploring different, different approaches to actually achieve the final solution. So it's a journey. It's a journey and various factors. There is no one single model or one single data or one single thing that will work. That is what is all about, you know, correlation, how you correlate the different things together. So it's all about that. So uh, precisely talking about the sentiment analytics, what kind of questions has been asked by the student? 
सो यू नो अगर कोई स्टूडेंट पूछता है कि एडमिशन uh, लेने के बाद से फॉर एग्जाम्पल मुझे अगर कैंसिल करना है तो मुझे रिटर्न कितना मिलेगा यू नो अब ये भी हो सकता है कि ही इज जेन्यूनली आस्किंग इट फॉर समन एल्स बट ही इज आस्किंग ही कुड आस्क इट फॉर हिमसेल्फ एज वेल सो दैट विल एक्चुअली एक कोरिलेशन बन जाता है कि ओके ही इज टॉकिंग अबाउट द कैंसिलेशन सो दैट्स वट आई एम सेइंग दैट इज नो वन सिंगल अप्रोच हाउ इन जनरल दैट पर्सन इज बेसिकली यू नो आस्किंग द क्वेश्चन और गिविंग द फीडबैक और टॉकिंग ऑन द सोशल मीडिया और यू नो यूजिंग वेरियस सोशल प्लेटफॉर्म्स टू एक्चुअली कमेंट एंड शेयर हिज सेंटिमेंट्स सो इट दिस इज अ जॉइंट इफेक्ट ऑफ ऑल दो सेंटिमेंट्स and of course again every model it it keeps training as and when it gets more and more data it keeps training itself and as is tarah se uska efficiency badhta hai hmm thank you ma'am sure hello ma'am uh, i have one question yeah that are there uh, any specific techniques to analyze uh, the data yeah uh, what's your name please nilesh babaskar yeah, nilesh yeah nilesh of course i mean there are various uh, approaches tools and technologies to analyze the data uh, many of the time it depends on what kind of output are you expecting from uh, that action or that project or that data so uh, say for example if it is uh, so i was talking about the retail analysis if it is only the insights Uh, then probably the visualization technique can be used. अगर हमको data study करना है तो probably the cleaning and preparations होता है अगर data quality करना है तो probably you will have to actually get into a data quality techniques and tools. So exactly what outcome are you expecting from that activity? It depends on that. So what are the tools and technologies and techniques that has to be applied on that? Okay, got it. Thank you, ma'am. Sure. Sure. Ma'am. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Ma'am, may I ask you a question? My yeah, name sure. is Ryan. Sorry. Yeah, sure. Ma'am, what is meant by team composition? Uh, can you repeat your question? Uh, can you repeat your question? Team composition. Team composition. Team com. so you want to understand what is a team composition yes ma'am let i'm more audible okay and what is a team composition so team composition is basically what are the different uh, roles that are required and what are the different skills that are required to complete a project ab jaise for example data visualization ka project agar hai to the data visualizer is sufficient to deliver the project agar sirf data modeling ka uh, project hai to only data scientist is enough to deliver the project agar sirf data modeling ka uh, project hai to only the data modeler is sufficient so kya uh, kya parts hai us project mein if the project includes the Uh, data engineering part as well as data science part as well as data visualization part then we definitely require all three expertise to deliver that project so is tarah se ek project ko deliver karne mein kya kya skills competencies lagti hai uske hisab se we have to choose the people who will work on that project that typically is the team composition okay ma'am i hope i address your question Yes, ma'am. Any other questions, students? Any more questions? If you are unable to mute, you can uh, post it in the yeah, chat box as well. In the chat box as well. Bharat Mistri has sent uh, a question. How the data science is how the changing the operation management rules, good effects, and also drawbacks. okay see uh, data science in operation management so there are some certain uh, repeated task right so wo repeated task jo hai that will definitely be automated 
तो आई वॉज गिविंग यू द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ अ बैंक की आज की डेट में बैंक में जाके वो रजिस्टर में एंट्री करने वाले जॉब्स नहीं है दैट इज कम्प्लीटली एलिमिनेटेड बिकॉज यू नो कंप्यूटर्स हैज टेकन प्लेस ऑफ दैट वैसे आज की डेट में ऑल दी रिपीटेड टास्क मे बी डेटा एंट्री के टास्क है या सिंपल सिंपल राइटिंग के जो टास्क है मेंटेनिंग यूर यू नो मंथली रिपोर्ट्स के जो टास्क है ऑल दो टास्क विल बी ऑटोमेटेड but uh, the task all those tasks or all those roles that requires the intelligence to be applied obviously those roles and those uh, jobs will never be eliminated so good effects hamesha good effects is you know automation actually saves a lot of time so obviously uh, it saves time it saves cost that will always be the benefits एंड निगेटिव पार्ट एज सच निगेटिव पार्ट नहीं बोलूंगी मैं बट ऑब्वियसली वाई वुड यू थिंक इट दैट वे की वाई वुड एनी वन वॉन्ट टू डू अपिटेटिव टास्क वो किसी ह्यूमन ब्रेन के लिए इट इज वेरी बोरिंग टू डू द सेम टास्क अगेन एंड अगेन अगेन सो इन अ वे इट्स गुड टू ऑटोमेट दैट सो दैट ह्यूमन कैन बेसिकली फोकस ऑन सम मोर इंटेलिजेंट टास्क राधर देन फोकसिंग ऑन दी मुंडेन एंड रिपिटेटिव टास्क then then okay 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 thank 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 you thank you very much. Okay, good thanks okay, then another question asked by Nikita it is good for HR professional to learn to yes of course I mean uh, you know there are लॉट ऑफ यूज केसेस दैट आर देर इन एच आर डोमिन लाइक आई वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट प्रडिशिंग प्रेडिक्टिंग द अट्रिशन और आइडेंटिफाइंग द पीपल हु आर एट रिस्क ऑफ लिविंग और मे बी वेरियस रीजन फॉर वाई पीपल आर लिविंग दैट विल डेफिनेटली हेल्प यू टू टेक अप सर्टन प्रोएक्टिव मेजर्स और यू नो मेक चेंज टू योर एच आर पॉलिसीज एंड प्रोसीजर्स विच विल हेल्प टू रिड्यूस द अट्रिशन सो दिस इज वन ऑफ द यूज केसेस लाइक देर आर देर आर मेनी यूज केसेस इन एच आर डोमिन एज वेल so uh, power bi or any bi tool will uh, typically be helpful so you know data analysis can also be done in excel as simple as that how you look at the data how you can make most out of that data is something that is essentially important so uh, yeah i mean learning of the tool definitely would be beneficial to anyone bi is now been applicable bi and data science is applicable in all the industries so it will always be beneficial advantages if you learn uh, those tools in any industry sector i hope i address your question nikita okay great yeah one more question from mari so mari is asking data science is also called as data presentation of their job roles responsibility of individual employees or organization to their hod or yeah yeah of course i mean uh, Uh, data science is you know a very very broad umbre umbrella so a simple example of data science is you have a data and some tools technology is applied to that data to make most out of it to you know uh, figure out the information that is required uh, by different consumers or uh, utilize it for your own consumption as well so yes i mean this this is pretty much the a uh, job of a data presenter or data science or maybe you know you can call it as a data analyst also what is the meaning of analytics okay so you know if you actually go to a dictionary and search this word analytics you will not get any meaning of this word analytics but uh, typically how it has been looked upon as uh, uh, analysis when uh, applied together with on the numbers with the help of statistics to actually figure out what is the most that you can make out of that data is typically known as analytics so analytics is basically certain operations on the data to arrive at certain actions and predictions that we can do and you know analytics can be of different types so uh, predictive analytics prescriptive analytics diagnostic analytics uh these are the different types of analytics which can be drawn on the top of the data that you have access to so uh, i mean general meaning of analytics could be applying different techniques on the data to make most out of that data is is the simple answer to your question effect of chat gpt in data analytics very interesting question so chat gpt typically have effects on all the fields so i mean various actions can are actually automated 
right from you know writing a small blog or article to actually writing a piece of code using chat gpt but you know eventually at the end of the day you need to understand what is being given so uh, if you are a consumer of chat gpt you need to uh, understand what is the outcome that is giving you that is given by chat gpt to you so that is where is the human intervention human in, human intelligence is required so chat gpt probably could give you anything how would you verify that that is that is something that is where you know human mind would be required from now on what's not to uh, writing the course and programs so uh, you know when we had started coding long back in 1995 uh, and I, I know it will be very difficult to imagine uh, the days without smartphone and the days without even Windows operating system. Kafi logo ne to aap logo ne laptop ya computer dekha hi nahi hoga before Windows. But we started working before Windows. So, amare paas, uh, we only had a command prompt or command prompt pe hum log program likhte the in the assembly language. Very difficult to imagine for these people. But date me, if I take pride in writing those programs, that means I am not progressed at all. So nowadays, wo sab syntaxes yaad rakho and you know functions yaad rakho. Yeah, the only help that we used to get is we used to get from books. So you buy you have to go to the library, buy a book or take a book on rent, then you know, read that book and then arrive at uh, a function me yek option. Hai. So, today, you have, uh, there are tools, not only chat GPT, many AI tools which are actually giving the ready-made code. But now, intelligence is not not for remembering the syntaxes and typing and writing the code. Now, intelligence is not what that code is bringing out. Is it something that your program expects or wants? So, that is something that is required now. Hi, hi, uh, hi, ma'am. Ashna said, students, we can take one last question because we have already extended two minutes. So, anyone, any last question? Hello, ma'am. Shubangi here. Yes, Shubangi. Yeah, so uh, just one question. So, what are roles and responsibilities for SME role in case of team structure? I saw that one of the SME sure. roles. Yeah. So uh, SME is basically a person from that domain. So uh, if you would have uh, seen the use case of a healthcare domain mm -hmm. where we were actually helping a gynec surgeon to uh, predict the uh, you know use of uh, antibiotics. So mm -hmm. that doctor is an SME who understands okay. ki patients ke history ke patterns kya hai. Uske upar si dawa ka kya affect ho sakta hai. So she knows about the symptoms. She knows about the uh, antibiotics as well. That is the subject matter expertise. Or if I have to give you another example, uh, maybe manufacturing domain ka jo maine case study liya hai. Wahan pe manufacturing domain mein, manufacturing kaise hota hai? Ya machines mein jo sensors lagai hai, vibration sensor ka jo data hai, wo kaise read karte hai? So I, as an IT person, uh, was not able to understand ki wo data generate kya kar hai. What do you mean by those rotations? Why do you mean by those vibrations? How the quality of a product is impacted by those vibrations? Ye sab kaun bata sakta hai? A person who operates that machine day in and day out. Who, that person is the SME. Or, okay. or the person who is responsible for assembling different parts of a car. So wahan pe assemblies ki expertise lagte hai. So, Mm -hmm. Different different domain mein, uh, different different sectors mein ye jo, ya, ya financial hai. So I mm -hmm. need to understand ki income tax ke brackets kaise hai ya you know uh, fraud financially kaise patterns uh, kya patterns ka kya matlab hai. For that I need to ya EBITDA kya hai. We had delivered recently a project on EBITDA. So EBITDA ye term kya hai aur usko kaise hum real life mein implement kar sakte hain tax hamara gst kaise katta hai uska calculation kaisa hai uske liye mujhe koi to finance domain ka expertise chahiye that is an sme okay so okay. these okay. are the definitions of the smes from various sectors who are actually helping us to uh, arriving at a solution for these industries okay thank you e even if there are any more questions you can connect me connect with me on linkedin so, Nali Kulkarni, uh, you can search Pune area or Intelligent Technologies. You can very easily find me. 
and we can connect over there and uh, i'll definitely have would uh, like to have more and more questions i'll try to answer all of the questions yes ma'am thank, thank you so much for that uh, so before proposing the official vote of thanks ma'am i would request uh, bhageshri ma'am and the students to just switch on their cameras and we can have a nice screenshot with you so uh, team are you ready yes, please students switch on your cameras yes okay thank you thank you so much uh, students please do not leave the session uh, there are some announcements at the end and ma'am it was our honor and a privilege to have you for the spectrum of the mit sd virtual conclave uh, thank you so much for taking out your time and your insights or the aspects regarding industry landscapes and the landscape which you share particularly for mm -hmm. india region the opportunities uh, for the business sectors various business sectors were truly valuable uh, the the examples and the case studies were also really helpful for all the students so thank you so much thank you ashna thank you bhageshri and thank you everyone for giving me this opportunity you, to address this uh, wonderful uh, audience thank our you. pleasure ma'am thank you so much definitely looking for such a more sessions with you yes same here same thank here. you thank, thank you, you so much ma'am thank you